Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I'm Janita Sorga, the mayor of Greenfield, and I'm so pleased to welcome all of you to the city of Greenfield. Happy you could join us during this wonderful foliage season. I hope you take it, uh, a moment to stick around after to see our beautiful sights, poet seat, and our vibrant downtown. I want to thank Governor Mara Healy, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, and their talented team for the work they have accomplished on our region's behalf. <clears throat> whether, whether it's aiding with extreme weather emergencies or, or visiting to discuss regional priorities, they have been both very attentive to the needs of Greenfield and Franklin County. This administration continues to prioritize regional equity for all of Massachusetts, and we are so very grateful for it. So it is my pleasure to introduce Governor Mara Healy. Thanks, Mayor. Great. Wow. It, uh, thank you so much, Mayor DeSorger. It's, it's wonderful to be here in Greenfield. It was such a beautiful ride, of course, out Route 2, um, this beautiful, beautiful time of year. And so thank you for hosting us. And um, great day to celebrate free public transit in Massachusetts. We're super excited to be here today. And in addition to the mayor, I want to thank our legislative partners on this because we're not able to do this without their um, support of the funding. And so to all of the legislative folks who are here and their staff, we are so grateful to you, including Senator Comerford, Rep. Lay, Rep. Whips. Uh, we also have Lily from Rep. Dom's office. Um, thank you for that support. Very, very much appreciated in getting this, getting this done. We're also delighted to be joined by Mayor Nicholson from Gardner um, and uh, appreciate his support as well. I am uh, thrilled to be here with members of our team, members of our team who have been working really hard on this, including MassDOT Undersecretary Hayes Morrison, our Rail and Transit Administrator Meredith Schlesinger, our Deputy Administrator Tom Schiavone. Um, huge, huge thank you to you all and to the entire rail and transit team for your work on the funding that we're celebrating today. Really, where are you? Thank you so much, guys. Yes, yes. Um, thank you. Thank you. I also want to uh, acknowledge and thank Administrator Tina Cody of the Franklin Regional Transit Authority and all of the Regional Transit Authority leaders who are standing with us. It is super exciting. They stretch all the way across the Commonwealth. Put your hands up, RTA members. Yes. These, these folks have to run all the RTAs in the region providing these critical services and grateful uh, for the partnership with our administration. We're also grateful to our nonprofit leaders who provide critical services in this region, including the Food Bank of Western Mass, Laura Sylvester, and the Public Health Institute of Western Mass, Jessica Collins. Thank you. So here's what this is, $30 million to 13 regional transit authorities to provide year-round free transit. That's what we're doing. It's a big deal, a big deal. Free transit. In addition to Franklin, we have Brockton, Berkshire, Cape Ann, Lowell, Montucha, Merrimack Valley, Metro West, Nantucket, Pioneer Valley, Southeastern, and Vineyard Transit Authorities. That's, uh, that, that's amazing. I want to start by recognizing the RTA programs. Uh, many of them have been working on and instituting fare-free options for years now, working towards this. And um, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing. I know that we are able to, as a state, confidently invest in this work because of the confidence that we have in our RTAs. You've seen the positive impact that affordability has on riders and the communities that you serve. And that's why public transit is such a priority. Public transit, transportation infrastructure, this is a huge priority for our administration. It's a modern transportation infrastructure 
It supports our economy. It's good for the environment and helps us reach our climate goals. It connects folks to school, to jobs, to groceries, to doctor's appointments, to everything they need to do. To have the full positive impact we want it to have, transit has to be equitable. Everybody needs to be able to use it. And it has to provide good service as well, service that people can actually depend on, count on. That means students, families, seniors with lower incomes, people with disabilities, residents who aren't connected to urban centers. I grew up in a rural community of 1,700 people. You need to make sure that transit is actually connecting to people all across the state. We're an administration with a huge focus on geographic regional equity, um, including recognition for our rural communities. I'm proud to be the first governor to ever appoint a director of rural affairs. Um, so, yeah. So, so regional transit authorities, they're a lifeline. Um, they're so, so critically important to our state. And I'm just so proud to be able to make this investment in fair free regional transit. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our undersecretary, Hayes Morrison at Mass DOT, uh, doing a great job with the entire DOT team. Thank you, Undersecretary Morrison. Good afternoon, everyone. I wanna give a, a special thank you to Mayor DeSosier for hosting us here today. It is always a great day when you can be in Western Mass, especially I here because you, it's always the sunshine sunny here. So that's good to know, I'll have to come back. And I also wanna go ahead and recognize Linda Dunleavy as well, who has been a tireless, She's been a tireless member of um, many, many a uh, planning working group, and with her, we will plan for even better transit service as we go forward. But today in particular, I am here to bring uh, greetings from Secretary tibbetts -Nutt, who I think that all of you know is also a tireless advocate for fair and fare-free transit. It is, today is a great example on how Simple commitments like fare free transit improve the quality of life for all Massachusetts residents. And that's what we're here to celebrate today is all Massachusetts res residents and all of the RTAs in Massachusetts, which is, is something very, very special. This day would not be possible without the leadership of our governor, lieutenant governor, our representatives from the legislature, who I think are all here, and that's amazing, all of these tireless transportation professionals from the regional transit agencies across the Commonwealth. I mean, uh, Matt, uh, Mike Lambert's here from Brockton, so um, this is a great pull. Um, all of them have worked with advocates who are also here in the audience for such a long time for this improvement, and today is really about all of you and all of them. Congratulations for making all of, your, all of our work better as partners, and I really hope that all of you um, have the ability to take advantage of this improved access. These significant investments in transit have prioritized connecting communities, public transportation improvements, and partnerships together for the greater benefit of all. This also reinforces the work that we are doing with West East Rail and Administrator Schlesinger is here, which will expand passenger rail service from Boston to Worcester to Springfield and into Albany. This will help connect all rural communities to economic opportunities and provide seamless travel routes by train and encourage more travelers to opt for public transit. Again, not only better for the environment, but just better for access in general. Today, we mark yet another milestone and celebrate this investment as we know that this will have a major impact for generations to come. Thank you again for the opportunity to be before you today. I am happy to introduce the um, Franklin Regional Transit Authority Administrator, Tina Cote. Thank you. Thank you, Undersecretary. Um, we feel very privileged to have uh, the governor here today. And, and everyone else in this attendance, but on behalf of the FRTA and all the regional transit authorities, 
we'd like to thank Governor Healy for supporting transit throughout the Commonwealth. I'd also like to extend our appreciation to our legislators here today, Senator Joe Comerford, Representative Natalie Blay, and Representative Suzanne Whips, not only for their advocacy and continued recognition of our Rural Transit Authority and all of the accomplishments that we've developed over the past few years, our successes in part are because of all of you, so thank you. I'd also like to take the time to recognize my transit colleagues um, and call them out by name. So we have Josh Rickman here from Worcester Regional Transit Authority, Eric Rousseau from Southeastern Regional Transit Authority, Felicia Webb from Cape Ann Regional Transit Authority, Mike Lambert from Brockton, Jim Nee from Metro West, and Bruno Fisher from Manachusett. The administrators from BRTA and PVTA could not be here today, but I do want to recognize them and thank them for collaborating with us on some existing projects and look forward to collaborating on some other um, soon to be announced projects that we have in the works. I also want to give a shout out to our deputy administrator, Michael Peralt. His perseverance um, every day is what has helped us shape the FRTA into what we are today in collaborating with the microtransit program we operate. Um, in addition to many other projects we've had going on over the years. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Wayne Waldron, our general manager, and all of the mechanics, the bus drivers, and everybody else who help keep our system running on a day-to-day -day basis. We couldn't do it without all of these individuals. Um, our partners at Mass Dot are here as well. A big shout out to Tom Schiavone and Meredith, Meredith Schlesinger for their guidance. I know working with all of us <laughs> isn't always easy and we're grateful for your patience and your ability to keep us all on track. Um, so as many of you know, the FRTA suspended fares on the fixed route system during the pandemic using CARES funding. We can now utilize the tri-transit funds to continue with these efforts. In addition to this, beginning November 1st, the FRTA will now extend the fare-free fares for our demand response communities as well. It is our hope that more of our seniors will take this opportunity to use public transit and to access so many of the services that our region has to offer. Um, thank you. And you can get there from here. In our region, it takes a little bit more coordination, but the resources are in place and we're here to make things all happen in transportation. Um, so I would like to now introduce Laura Sylvester, who's the public manager for the Food Bank of Western Mass. Thank you. Thank you, Tina, and thank you to Governor Healy for this invitation and for all your administration is doing to make Massachusetts an even better place to live. Um, my name is Laura Sylvester, and I'm the Public Policy Manager at the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts, and I also lead the Western Mass Transportation Advocacy Network, which is known as WIMTAN. The Food Bank started WIMTAN in 2019 because lack of access to reliable transportation is one of the biggest causes of food insecurity. A lack of transportation means a lack of access to jobs, to educational opportunities. It means lack of access to medical care and to social services. We hear again and again from the people that we serve how difficult it is for them to get food because they don't own a car and the bus system doesn't run frequently enough to get them to a grocery store in a reasonable amount of time. Or worse, they live in one of the many rural areas where buses don't run at all. And even if they do have access to buses, for people struggling to make ends meet, even a $3 bus fare can be too much. WIMTAN has been advocating for increased RTA funding and for fare-free buses since 2019, and we are so thrilled that the passage of the fair share amendment and funding dedicated to transportation has led to this day. Fare-free buses... Fare-free buses will have a powerful impact on people's ability to access food, medical care, education, and so much more. We're grateful to the Healy administration and to all the elected officials here, to the RTA uh, members and to the RTA employees for prioritizing transportation access across the Commonwealth and especially here in Western Mass where it's so desperately needed. And now I would like to introduce Jessica Collins, who is the Executive Director of the Public Health Institute of Western Mass. Thank you, Laura. Um, 
We are so grateful for your dedication, Laura, actually, uh, and our policy director, Andrea Freeman, and all the advocates out there, their dedication and passion for greater investments in regional transit. <clears throat> and so are terribly relieved and happy to celebrate the start of fare free bus service for all three RTAs in Western Mass with Governor Healy and Under Secretary Morrison. Uh, the Public Health Institute is a proud member of the RTA Advocates Coalition. Uh, deeply grateful to Governor Healy, the legislature, especially Representative Natalie Blay and Senator Moran, as well as the Fair Share Amendment for making this a reality. With many Western Mass partners, we conduct community health needs assessments and time and time again, transportation emerges as one of the top needs voiced by our neighbors, as does the data from the 413cares.org uh, platform that helps connect people to local services. One of the top ser uh, searches consistently is transportation. Research tells us that those who rely most on RTA services are disproportionately people of color and low-income residents. For steady, better-paying jobs, more people need transportation that they can rely on day-to-day -day and year-to-year, -year, which is why reliable, predictable funding is critical for the RTAs. Public transportation does more than just get us places. It connects us to opportunities and a better quality of life. Thank you all for ensuring free public transportation. Back to you, Governor. Hello, all. I want to join. Uh, my name is Joe Comerford. I represent the Hampshire Franklin Worcester District, which includes 15 communities in Franklin County, beautifully served by the FRTA. And I'm joined here with Representative Natalie Blay, Representative Susanna Whips, who was here before an appointment, just to lend. Uh, my great cheer to today, Governor, Undersecretary, and Director Schlesinger, all our RTA partners. It's a beautiful day uh, to be in Franklin County celebrating Fair Free. And I just want to say that what the FRTA has been able to do for this county with innovations in partnership with FERCOG, Megan and Lyndon, everyone at FERCOG around, around this microtransit work, uh, around the ride on demand services has been nothing short of miraculous yep. on what they had prior to this incredible infusion of transformative funding. Again, thank you, Governor. And now can you imagine what we're going to look like? Friends in rural Western Mass, I don't have to tell any of us here, uh, we struggle with population decline. We struggle with getting workers to jobs. We struggle for, with getting elders to medical appointments. We struggle with getting students to classes. And I see uh, Greenfield President, Greenfield Community College President Michelle Shute, who can tell us all about that. This is a step in that direction of closing those gaps so that workers can get to the second and third shifts, so that elders can live here and age gracefully, so that young families can move and know that their kids can get to school and perhaps free community college at Greenfield Community College. So it's, it's a great day for so many things in terms of transportation equity, but this is also a rural equity boon, as the governor said and led with so beautifully. So I'm just glad to be here and cheering with you. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be really quick. It is amazing to do this work alongside Senator Comerford and Representative Susanna Whips. Uh, if you look to your left and to your right, Everybody here knows one another. Each and every one of you have been fighting for this for so very long. You've been fighting for this because you understand how important it is for us to live in these communities that we love because we know our neighbors and we want to be in a community that values exactly what we see right here today. To have an administration, to have this governor, to have this governor, to have this governor, this administration fighting for us, for 351 communities across this Commonwealth is extraordinary. And let me tell you, as people like Alexis, and I want to give you a shout out, Alexis, we have been fighting for this because we have shown people Google Maps that say if you want to get to a class at Greenfield Community College in the after hours, at night, after 5 p.m., if you want to get your groceries on the weekends, there's nothing unless you have a car. And that is an extraordinary expense 
for people who live here, who choose to be a part of our communities. And when people in the Boston area see that, their minds are blown. How could we not have access to public transportation in the 351 cities and towns in the Commonwealth? Today, we are showing that that is possible. We have an administration that is committed to this and a legislator, this legislature, legislators, all of us are committed to making sure that this happens, to make sure that there is economic mobility. Thank you, President Shu, for being here today. Life Path, thank you for being here today. We have unions here. We have organizations here who are committed to doing this ever, every single day. And we, this is extraordinary. Don't take for granted what is happening right now. This is important, and we need to build on it. And I want to just say thank you to the regional transit authorities who are standing here behind us, the people who do this work every day, the drivers who do this work every day. This is important work. You are serving your communities, and we value you. We want to make sure that not only the administrators, not only the riders, but also the people who are driving the buses. This is a life-changing career. So if you are interested in this life-changing <laughs> career, we need you. We need you to drive these buses. And if you want to talk to drivers whose lives it has changed, talk to any one of these people here behind me because we need you to serve our communities. And thank you so much. I've talked too long. It is amazing to be here. We don't get an opportunity to celebrate this kind of thing very often here in Greenville, Massachusetts. And it is wonderful to be here. And thank you, Governor, thank for doing you. this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's great. It's great. It's great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ripley and, and Senator Comerford. Um, we, um, I know we're gonna, we're gonna actually step on. This is look great. It's great, and uh, I really do want to underscore. You know, we've been working on a lot of things these last um, nearly two years that we've been in office, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and myself. And you know, we're proud of the fact that we got to work early with the legislature on cutting taxes, and now Massachusetts has the most generous child tax credit in the entire country. We're proud of that. We're proud of the fact that. We were able to work with our legislative colleagues, free breakfast, free lunch for every school child in Massachusetts. We now have free community college for everyone in Massachusetts. We passed the most historic veterans legislation, right, to provide services and benefits to those who served us and their families, the HERO Act. And, and, uh, and most importantly and most recently, the housing bond bill, $5 billion. We know housing is too expensive, too out of reach for too many in the state. And that's why we were so proud to be able to work together on this transformational housing bill that's going to bring about more affordable housing for people across um, not just this region, but across the entire state. As I say, you know, we're a team that believes in and loves all 351 of our cities and towns. Each of our regions has different needs. It's been really special to partner with the people here, whether it was in response to the devastating floods last summer or on an initiative like this to make sure that those who need transit, it's not as easy to come by as when you live in a big city like Boston, for example, are able to access that. So these are the things we want to build on because our goal is to make Massachusetts more affordable, more competitive, and more equitable. And today's announcement is a great step in that direction. Again, huge thanks to my DOT team out there working hard every day. We asked them to take a look at this, figure out how to get it done, and they delivered. So thanks, everybody, for coming out. Um, I'm sure we can do a scrum, too, but are there any on-topic questions for any of us? Or you just want to see us get on the bus? Awesome. 